Hi fellow artists, welcome back to another end of the month haul video for October. Some of my new stuff came in and I hope you're all doing well. Grab your snacks, grab your favorite drink, and sit back and enjoy all my lovely finds between the thrift stores, Amazon, and here we go. I hope everyone is having a wonderful time. So we're gonna, I got a huge pile over here on the bed, kind of my, you know, place. So we're going to start out with some of the thrift store finds that I have. So I'm getting into mixed media and collage and I was able to go to a local thrift store, very, very cheap and great finds. And my first thing I found is some old sheet music. These are primarily hymns. So as you can see here, so I'm hoping to you to take all of these apart and to use them in mixed media collaging. I love that they have the vintage feel on it. Like this particular item here, this book, is another hymn book, hymnal and it's kind of fallen apart on the ends so I don't even think I will be able to salvage the book book cloth or anything like that for a bookbinding project. Not totally sure but again it's all kind of like old hymns. Pieces are kind of falling apart. It should be perfect for mixed media collage. So here, here's that one. Um, it just says Songs of Service. This particular one is called Songs That Everybody Loves. And my favorite is Jesus All You Need. Some more old sheet music. So I got a several of those. This one has kind of fallen off. I thought, well, it's a thicker paper. It could go on a, a piece. And then another one that I got here of older sheet music that has like this old vintage kind of look to it. So, yeah. So those are great. Got them really cheap, like a quarter, 50 cents. It's so easy to load your card up when stuff is a quarter and 50 cents. And you bring a two-year-old along with you, he just tends to throw everything in the cart. Which, besides the point, fun times thrift store shopping. So, my next pile, <laughs> pile, or, uh, is old magazines that I've been looking for inspiration in. So I found this. Um, this actual issue is from 1987. So I was five years old at the time. So it's got inspiration, stuff like this, which I thought is like really awesome. Uh, other Images have just kind of popped out here on this page. There's some here, loose and art. Um, these pieces are all done by John Singer, Singer Sargent, which I should kind of check that out. That's a half a one here. Uh, there's the other side. Uh, pages. It either looks like it fell out of another magazine. Um, uh, actually, there's a little snippet I will read to it. It says John Singer S Sargent, 1856 to 1925, is a is widely considered one of America's most important artists. He was also one of the most prolific in having produced thousands of work, including more than 800 portraits, most of which were done on commission by wealthy people in Europe and America, and for which he is best known. 
considering the, his enormous output, it's not surprising that much of Sargent's body of work has rarely, if ever, been seen in public for many years, but that oversight is being at least partly corrected in the month of Whitney, this month at the Whitney Museum of Art in New York, where the largest retrospect exhibit of Sargent's work assembled since his death and 165 paintings, drawings, and watercolors gathered from the museum and private collectors collections here and in Europe will be on view. January 4th, 1987. The show which will also pre Oh. That is really cool. So there's... He did 800 portraits. Hmm. I've been looking into getting into portraiture work more as I've been practicing, but I would like to actually do some mixed media portrait work, which would be really fun to try out. So, yeah, so I thought this would be some good inspiration um, to me. So here's more of the photos and stuff. Um, over here on this side is some other stuff, so yeah, cool, cool find. Arts in America. And then I got some other, um, magazines with some really powerful, interesting images to use in collage and stuff. Um, let's see here. These are of like bears and stuff, which is really nice. So, I don't want to do a full kind of flip through here. You don't have a lot of time for all that. But if you want to see like a flip through or anything, when I get more filming equipment, I'd be happy to do that. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pick some interesting... You know, images. And this is another one of the magazines that was just kind of intriguing to me. Um, sorry, I'm a little tired from having a two-year-old running around the thrift store <laughs> most of the afternoon with him. Um, this is a travel book of Maui. Um, basically more inspiration, like this, more reference photos that I don't have to be scrounging around on the internet. Um, let's see, more landscapes, I just thought this was really cool. Picked this up super cheap, I love doing that. This one's, uh, photos from Beijing. China. And what was inspiring about this book, well, let me see, let me pick an image here, was if you can see down here, the interesting shapes and architect. So there were a lot of pictures of buildings, um, different landscapes of the, the China landscapes in different in China which is always kind of like intriguing to me um, like these with the sunsets and the different skies with the Great Wall so that was another good one this one is Utah this one is absolutely freaking gorgeous like when you open that up that is gorgeous um, uh, give me one more sorry kind of off to the side <laughs> a little slow here but 
th this is another amazing one. So, yeah. So I can kind of give you a little quick preview of those books that I just um, randomly picked up. I now have to find a bookcase that's going to hold it all because I seem to be filling it up fast with references, art, um, drawing books on the dresser, coloring books, so which I don't know where I'm going to put the bookshelf, but I'll figure it out. This is another really cool one called The Great Lakes, which is I'm close to Lake Superior in northern Wisconsin, so... But, I mean, sorry, look at that fountain. Wouldn't that be interesting to use as a reference photo for architectural? I mean, that just reminds me so much of like Frank Lloyd Wright stuff. There's a lot of cityscapes that I want to learn to do more and working with perspective and things like that. Um, let's see. My all-time favorite sailboats, but on this top corner here is a picture of Mackinac Island Bridge. Um, I have some really cool pictures of the Mackinac Island Bridge that I took the day that I left for Bible college going over that bridge in a hazy like this haziness and it was a memory that I won't ever forget you know more shipyards and stuff this book had a few pages I don't know if you saw it good enough but here it is um ripped out of it not a big deal but like I said primarily these are all used for references um the fact that recycling, um, I tend to go down on a rabbit hole when I'm looking for reference photos on Google and Facebook. And this is a way to kind of give these books a second life so they don't end up in the trash is by, you know, finding these in local thrift stores and so that they don't get wasted. Another thing that was just completely inspiring was this book. Uh, it's like random poetry for children and why it was inspiring is all of these illustrations and the fact sorry I'm trying to get this on better view on camera stuff like this was like all over throughout the book um, just very simple illustrations and poems and things they're all geared for kids, but yet at the same time, just the artwork in here alone, like this, is inspiring for me to look at, to go back and say, hmm, I think I can draw this or to work on that. And know that it's okay to try. I mean, the animal pictures in here are just absolutely amazing, gorgeous, inspiring. Art can also be inspired by poetry that we read, or things we see, or books we enjoy. Um, another one that I found was How to Draw Horses and Ponies. Um, this is an older uh, drawing book. It's kind of geared towards kids, but I thought I'm learning how to draw that, you know, this would be good, like, instruction very simple large pictures easy to follow and not having to because honestly some of the drawing books that I buy are geared for more intermediate artists instead of like beginner artists that um or more advanced and sometimes you have to start with the beginner stuff and work your way up but most of the beginner stuff is all geared for kids so you know, it's okay to to learn how to draw out a kid's book. Don't be ashamed of that because it's a resource. And it will get you a starting point and a, to get moving because as you practice, you won't need the book. And then you can pass it on to another kid 
that is in need of it. I wonder if my glasses are annoying. So I'm gonna take them off because it looks like <laughs> I've got them glaring. So then I picked up this other one about how to draw dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures, which kind of intrigued me because my nephews love dinosaurs. And I'm like, well, eventually I'm going to get to drawing animals, but I don't have a lot of animal drawing books. So this was something that I kind of picked up. I thought this would be cool to just play around with in the sketchbook at times. So that's that one. Um, I also got another artist photo reference flowers. Just remember guys, these are out of print, but you can buy them used on Amazon. Um, they have several different sellers. So I've been just one by one picking picking these up and these are more gorgeous oops gorgeous photo references of different botanicals um different color choices it's just gorgeous like i said stuff that i can take off of uh, when drawing painting doing things that I don't have to dig around online. Uh, another really good creative drawing and intuitive drawing course book um, goes up talking about simple exercises. I had caught this because I have another book by the author of this book, um, Richard Taylor, I believe. Yeah, Richard Taylor called how to draw buildings and saw how that one was laid out and then I found this one and I thought I might as well pick this up so and then the last art instruction book this was mentioned on another channel that I follow and I don't remember which one was the art of perspective in all different mediums now I hadn't haven't read this particular book um, yet, but it talks about using depth and color and transitioning. It talks about your viewpoint, vanishing points, and stuff like that. Um, whatever medium, and I'm looking forward to diving into this one because perspective is really difficult for me just because I have a traumatic brain injury so that I'm hoping to find any easy way of getting around using that part of my brain, but also to build new skills so that I can draw that. I'm moving on to coloring books and journals and colored pencils and gel pens. I hope you're still sticking around and enjoying your snack. <laughs> I don't even have anything to drink. I drank mine all. I drank all of mine. Sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day and a long week. Uh, there's a squeak in there. I guess. For me. Which I hope you guys this week is doing really well. It's been long because I do other volunteer jobs throughout the week and that does keep me busy besides you two. So you didn't come here to hear me talk about all this other commentary stuff. You came to see what I purchased. So I picked up the small delusional or Ranger Delusions mixed media journal for collaging and stuff um and it comes with like a heavier cardstock an envelope i haven't used it yet i just took the cover off of it but my hope is to practice some collaging in here and inks and sprays it said that this cardstock should be able to hold up paint inks and sprays i've really struggled with wood pulp paper not holding up enough so I've been doing some research finding higher G excuse me higher GM GSM paper 
along with getting closer to um, <sighs> brain fart completely. <laughs> um, higher quality paper that's almost 100% cotton um, because I've noticed when I'm doing collaging in journals or um, things like that, if I don't choose the paper right, I get really frustrated and I stop working in them. So that is that moving along. I picked up another nice little town. This happens to be a mini, which is nice because then I can just pull this out wherever I'm at. The only thing about these coloring books, they are Amazon Create Space Paper and I've been playing around with my wax based pencils. It does leave an impression and the paper does buckle in these. So I'm hoping as I get to some of the other ones that I'm going to see less and less of that. Um, but these first few ones, I have I love the images, but I hate the freaking paper. As you can see, I have Nice Little Town 3, which is a bigger one, which I do like the bigger books versus the little ones. And these images are a lot better than some of the other ones, um, which kind of... And this is the reason why I got this is to help me with realism, shading, and practicing, and coloring it in. Because when I start drawing, building, and architectural stuff, I want to be able to draw on some inspiration of colors and stuff. Like I said, hate the paper, but love the artist. Yeah, nice little town. There's definitely flip throughs of those coloring books out on Amazon, not Amazon, excuse me, YouTube, if you're looking for a flip through. I'm sure on ColorTube there is plenty of people and I also got a Steampunk Darlings Hannah Lynn book. Kinda took the dive, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to get hers, um, but I've seen enough flip throughs and you know very interested kind of curious how the paper reacts this also feels like amazon create space paper um in this particular book they give you two copies of each image so you can do it twice which is really nice so if you mess up on one or you want to try so this is my first hannah lynn into my collection on to color pencil stuff. So in my studio space, I use dressers to store some of my art supplies in a craft cart. So I was like kind of going debating back and forth if I should get the big pencil cases or not. Um, and I'm like, well, where am I gonna put all the pencil cases to store all my different color pencils so I'm like well it's not really going to work with the dressers because it would take up a lot of room so first off I found these snap pencil things that came in a kit of four and I'm like well these would sit nicely with all of my pencils and I can put it in a drawer and stack them in there nicely and then I can just pull out a box um, I also have in, I bought a 12 set of budget macaroon pastels. That's what you see in here. Um, which are these pencils. So they are a triangular shape. Not that one. Um, so I thought I'd give it a try. I right now can't afford whole binds. So we're going to see how these, and I'm assuming these are wax based. So I have only swatched them out and I haven't done any playing with them because I wanted to do the haul video. And then I got another set of Giotto's, if I'm saying that right. And I believe these are oil based. I don't have the box anymore. Skin tone pencils. So. 
got them sharpened, swatched out. That will be another video explaining in my color book and why color swatching isn't really my favorite thing to do because it takes up a lot of freaking time. So. You'll have to stick around for that one. That I should be filming that here soon. Probably not to the end. <laughs> I also picked up the new Monarch set of the Black Widows. So now I have the full set up until that has been released. Um, this is a 48 set. They have a lot more pastels kind of filling out the set. So I'm really excited to start using these. I haven't used them yet. Like you said, I was waiting for the video, but I did get them swatched out and some of the colors are amazing. I'm not going to take them out because it would be like hard to hold all 48 in there. And so finally, I got three different sets from the dollar store of different gel pens. Um, of different colors. These are kind of a uh, bold metallic pens. So I don't even know the brand. They were at like Dollar Tree. Um, I also um, got some pastels and some neons in the second set to play around in the coloring books. So that's those. And this is another kind of pastel uh, set too. They were all a dollar. I'm a sucker for dollar sales. <laughs> and that is it, guys. I hope you have really enjoyed this and decided to stick around for the whole thing. I know it was a really long one this time. Um, I tend to do a lot of thrift store shopping, though, and get a lot of stuff. It's like my downfall. So I have to be careful. Plus, where am I going to store all this stuff? <laughs> Anyways, I hope you're doing well. Stay safe and continue to create and be you and have a great afternoon. Catch you on the next video, guys. Bye.